So, thanks, Carol. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about reinventing user experience. So the interesting thing about user experience is every day in my job, I go and work with customers around the world to try and help create more engaging products. The challenge here is there's something seriously wrong with the way we think about design. Okay. So one of the things which we're starting to notice about design is we, how do we make people care? Right? So as we look at creating these engaging products, there's two schools of thoughts which are out there. You know, one that's been around for a long time is this idea of making things beautiful, making things pretty. The other, which is actually fairly new, the new kid on the block is, so let's sprinkle some games on there. Problem is, neither of those two things actually address the fundamental issue of how you create compelling user experiences. So what I'm going to talk to you today about a new field. I've been doing research for a number of years now, and I've pulled together a number of ideas based on the latest in neuroscience and some of the things coming out of the research labs to create a new design paradigm, which I'm calling motivational design. So I'm going to talk to you about three stories. Three examples which you all should be familiar with. I'm not going to tell you what they are, but I'm going to explain later how they use motivational design in a slightly different way. Things which you might not have thought about. So the first story is a curator of the Louvre is found dead in one of his main galleries. His body is actually forming some cryptic message. A Harvard professor is called in to try and solve this mystery. But he's also the prime suspect. The next one is, the next example, plane crashes on an island. Strange island. There's a number of survivors there. But they realize very quickly they're not going to get rescued because they're over 1,000 miles off course. They're not alone. The last one is, the head of a mafia family dies, leaving you in charge. You have to bring the family together, and you have to take on the rest of the families. There's a war brewing. Are you up for the challenge? So how does this all play together? So I'm going to come back to these three examples and explain to you what the motivational design principles are. But first, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about user experience and some of the brain research which is out there. So there's this idea for a long time. We've been thinking that uh, the idea of pleasure, creating beautiful experiences. We always thought those two parts of our brain actually work together, liking and wanting. We thought that liking and wanting came hand in hand. The latest research shows that there's two separate circuits which deal with liking and wanting. And the interesting thing about separate circuits is they can fire independently. That creates some really interesting challenges for us. So what I'm going to go through is a couple of different examples. If we focus too much on liking without wanting and wanting without liking, we create some interesting ideas and not very pleasing ideas either. So usability, I'm going to throw usability engineering under the bus a little bit. We've been using it for a long time in design. This idea of less clicks, is that really the answer? What are you telling your users if you're saying that, oh, we have to make something less clicks? You're basically saying that this is an experience which they're not really going to like or want, and we have to make it as short as possible. Is that really the way we want to do this? We always joke, you know, usability engineer redesigned golf. He'd put the ball next to the hole. It would make 18 holes go by really fast, but I doubt you'd spend a lot of time playing it. So the next one is really interesting. This is where I actually dug into the research. Was I came about this idea of uh, what happens when the wanting circuit fires without the liking circuit. Addictive behavior, addiction drives people down a path to do things which they would never do normally and to these behaviors which they don't even like in the first place to get a experience which is diminishing in return. So addiction, I think we can all agree, is probably not something which is a desirable effect. But the interesting thing is, on the flip side of it, what do you get if you get liking without wanting? So we always, you know, this idea of a lipstick on a pig, we don't want to, so, but customers come to us every day with this idea that we should just put some fancy design on top of something, when they really should be focused on rethinking what that pig is and what the users actually want out of it, most people should be thinking about the pig, not so much about the lipstick. So how do we create 
better user experience. So let's together, let's walk through this. So we've got a challenge here. You want, you want to move the ball from one side from A to B. You know, we want to encourage people to do that. One way to do is usability, reduce the hill. Okay. Now let's uh, add in user experience. Let's make it pretty. Let's make them enjoy the experience of doing it. Is it really going to motivate them to get there? Now you turn it into a game. You can actually make that hill really, really high, make it more challenging, and they're actually going to want to play the game more. If you look at the, the golf courses around the world, they're actually beautiful, but it's the challenging nature of how you design golf courses which drags people in. It's a very challenging experience. So what does motivational design consist of? The key areas which I focus on come from these three different areas. So game design, I think you'll probably realize there's a lot of things about games which are very motivating. But it isn't a be all and end all. But there's a key mechanics which we can use. It's not about Halo. It's really about some really key cognitive ideas around game design. I learned more about, board ga learned more about game design from designing board games than I did interactive games. Then you've got social media. We're a TED audience. We know a lot about social media. I'm going to hear probably even more from David Amano later. So this idea there's a lot of patterns, reputation, recognition, identity, which we can use to create more engaging experiences. But the last one, behavioral economics. You might not have thought about it, but behavioral economics is this idea that, that our brains are actually wired differently than we think they are. This idea of it being predictably irrational. We're not the rational creatures we thought. I mean, one, an example I can give to you is like, you invite me over for dinner, you spent the whole night Cooking, I come, it's a beautiful meal. I give you $27 at the end of it. I think you feel a little insulted. Same dinner, this time I bring a nice bottle of wine. The wine might have actually cost only about 10 bucks. Rationally, we should prefer the $27 to the $10, $10 bottle of wine, but one makes you a very thoughtful guest, the other one makes you a jerk. The things about the way our brains are wired which aren't the way we think they are. So we need to start using some of these design patterns, a lot of cognitive biases out there, which we start using to create motivational design techniques. So let me come back to the examples. You might have guessed, Da Vinci Code, right? Dan Brown's page-turning book. The interesting thing about a page-turning book, what keeps you wanting to turn the pages? A great author, it's been done for thousands of years, creates questions in your head. This is actually a pattern from George Lowenstein called information gap theory. He creates curiosity by creating these questions. Who's the murderer? What's the secret he's keeping? You know, why is the, who's this teacher who keeps coming up? So he keeps drawing you in. This isn't the same thing when you look at a textbook, right? When was the last time you got a page-turning textbook? If we rethink about, rethink using some of these design patterns to actually reinvent education, we probably should start at textbooks, the way we teach, creating more engaging experiences. So the next one is lost. You probably gathered. J.J. Abrams is the master of information gaps. He calls them the mystery box, this idea of these questions. The thing you do with a TV show, which you can't do with a book, you can create, create enforced episodes gaps, like cliffhangers between episodes, between seasons. Yeah, I know the DVR is kind of killing that a little bit and all this online media, but he, it was a really interesting time because not only did they have that, he had social media as well. Communities came up and created these fake websites, this lost universe was created. It was a really engaging experience for a lot of people over six seasons. Mafia Wars is the last one. Obviously, none of you play Mafia Wars, but you've probably seen the status updates of your friends, right? What is this thing which is really engaging, which these people go through? There's reward schedules, there's social media, really interesting patterns which draw you in to grow your Mafia to take on your other friends. So these are three examples. One of the first things I'm going to you're going to hear when you talk about motivational design is this fear that people are going to use it to manipulate you. So unethical, coercive marketing, right? This is the thing which we fear the most. We have to stay away from that. If you look at this quadrant, we should be looking at liking and wanting together. And that's where our focus should be. So Jesse Shelley did a great talk. Is the future all about games? Ding, 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 rewards for brushing your teeth and all the rest of it? I don't think so. It's only one piece of the puzzle. We have to take these motivational design patterns to create more engaging experiences. So the mission I have for you, if you choose to accept it, is to use these ideas about how our brains actually work to redesign and rethink how we go about creating user engaging experiences. And this goes across public policy, healthcare, global warming, all these things. It isn't about software and it isn't about gadgets. Thank you.